Hey guys, so today we are going to be looking at the newly added deferred event system that Roblox is transitioning to. So to give a simple explanation of what these are, we are going to use this diagram from the deferred Lua event handling Roblox forum post, which we will also have a link for in the description. Now looking at this diagram, we have immediate event handling on the left and deferred event handling on the right. Now currently, Roblox is using the left or immediate method of handling events. This diagram is showing that an event will fire and then possibly not yield a return if there is another event that fires after it. So looking at this diagram specifically, we see A event fires, C event fires, and then nothing else fires after C, so C will yield, then A will yield, then B fires after A and C have completed, and B yields, of course, after it's done. Now this is a very quick or immediate method of firing events. However, it is fair to say that this could get a little sloppy, as even if B was the second defined event, it is now not actually firing until C is yielded, which isn't a reliable order. Now, taking a look at the right side of this diagram, we have an example of the same essential program. Three events, A, B, and C. However, using deferred events, these events will fire in the correct and given order, rather than an immediate or as-seen order. As you can see, event A fires and is queued. However, instead of immediately yielding, it is just queued. So, it's deferred. Then event B fires and is queued, or deferred. And event C, same thing, fires and is deferred. Now that these events have fired and are queued, or deferred, they will each yield in order that they were added to the queue. Meaning A, then B, then C will be the yield order. So now that we have a basic idea of these two types of event handling systems, let's see in the code what these changes could mean. Now if we look in the explorer, we can see that there is an option, or property, that we can change that's a part of workspace, called signal behavior. We see that in signal behavior there are three options, default, deferred, and immediate. So, for our first demonstration, I will be showing how deferred events can break code we already have in place. So, I will set this to immediate, which is also default for now, and we will be looking at the first player removing function. Now, in this function, we will also be checking to see when the character is removed, and when the ancestry is changed, so when the character parent is nil making sure we have deferred testing up here set to false. I'm now going to hit play. And then hit stop. Perfect. And now you can see we have three print statements. The player was removed, the character was removed, and the character parent is now nil. Perfect. That's exactly what we would expect using immediate events. Now if we go into workspace and change the properties to deferred, and then hit play once more, and then hit stop again. Okay, so we have an issue. We can see now that only player removing was printed, and that character removing and character parent is nil never actually got to print. Because of this new queue system of event handling, our other two embedded events never got a chance to run. This could very easily become an issue for lots of pre-existing code that users expect to work but when the default is changed from immediate to deferred will no longer work. Now let's move into a potential solution for this issue. So changing the deferred testing variable up here to true, we will now be testing out this second player removing function that we have made. Now as you can see inside of this function we just make sure the player was removed so that will print when that is run. Now looking inside of this second player removing function, we see that we have no embedded events. However, we do have one other function that will run when the player is removed called remove character. This will check to see if the character still exists. If it does, set it to nil. And then we can do whatever else we need to do when that character is removed. Now if we hit play and stop, we can see that in the output player removing printed and character parent is nil printed, meaning that we were able to see when the character was removed. 
and, if need be, manually remove it. Meaning that we are in full control as to what happens when the player removing function fires. We can see the character, we can remove the character, and do any other code that we need to run. This would be potentially keeping our code a little cleaner and more reliable without the usage of embedded events. Alright, so hopefully this sheds a little more light as to what deferred events are, as well as potential solutions to issues that you may have with code when you switch from immediate to deferred events. This change could very well help with ensuring reliability, and more than anything, a more sensible order of event executing, or yielding, in the future for Roblox scripting. Also, do know that this change shouldn't be happening very soon because it is still in beta, but do prepare and understand it and code with it in mind as it will likely someday be the default in all other projects.